Carl, thank you so much for bringing all these wonderful violinists uh, to come and play to Peter today. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Um, well, they're all part of the Hampshire County Youth Orchestra, which is part of the Hampshire Music Service. Um, and it's great to have the opportunity for them to play, basically. We haven't seen each other for nearly a year now, so we're looking forward to it. Yes, fantastic. So we've got five young violinists playing for you today. They're going to play for about half an hour each. And at the end of the session, at about half past four, we will have a Q&A session with Peter. So if you have any questions for him at all, please put them in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Don't put them in the chat window, we may miss them. But if you put them in the Q&A box, then we will put them to Peter at the end of the session. Um, so at, today at two o'clock now, uh, we're going to have Eleanor Holmes playing for us. She's going to be playing in Isai Third Sonata. Great, very difficult piece. Um, then we're going to have Lizzie Blunt playing the Bruch Violin Concerto. It's a favourite from Classic FM there. Tiger Jones playing Capriccio by Chaminade, um, who is a composer which I've only found out about recently. Um, Peter perhaps can talk to us a little bit more about her later on. She's very interesting. We then have Louisa Broad playing Beethoven's wonderful Sonata in D, Opus 12. And to round it all off, we have Nadia Wilson playing the Frank Sonata. <laughs> Let's go on. Okay. I, I, I think, you know, it's, it is uh, hard to play really quiet after we've been playing so big. I would not, uh, this is uh, pianissimo, I would not start it at the frog. There's no way you can play in softer way. We're back to the complete impressionistic music. You can go more over the fingerboard also. You know, you're playing completely on your own. There's no orchestra, there's no piano, there's no comp, there's nothing. It's just you. You can play so soft to bring the audience in, to, to make them come listen to you. Because this is extreme dynamics, going from a double forte to new to uh, uh, sustained at the end, to a pause, so you can prepare yourself, and then nothing. Okay. Um, just, just do from here. Um, um, just the last last note. And don't don't accent the last note. The last note is absolutely just a just run it. Remember, it's like the first time. T -a Anywhere there? To see how much time do we have? Yeah, we have six minutes. Uh, very good, Ma many good things. Um, just see, uh, yeah, very good. This, uh, this is difficult for the intonation because we're a little bit in no man's land because we have to lift our fingers, we don't have an anchor except for the beginning. So, th th this needs a little bit of practicing, okay, because it's. 
this is the first place that where the intonation is not the, for your level what you play. It's it's not good enough. Okay, so that that just needs some practicing. Um, fine, fine. Okay, let's go on a little bit because we don't have much time. Yeah, let, from the beginning of the theme. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, I would play a little, little bit longer, a little bit more bow, because if it's, we, we don't really register the notes. They're so difficult to make them sound. Now, one thing when you have a... You do a little bit... Uh, a little bit early there you start. Tidum, tidi, yum, padum, tidi, yum, padum. And now, you know, I, looking through a magnifying glass, the, you know, he's quite precise with the things. So he doesn't hold the E. Just the same as in a. Um, a, a but there he holds it. So maybe just have another look very carefully where he actually writes that you hold it or not. But I believe it is a separate note. Okay, but that, that, that's that's maybe a small thing. I don't know. Uh, so uh, maybe just uh, one more time. And uh, so keep it steady. Didum, didi yum, padam, didi yum, padam, Okay. And I would keep it forte. This uh, and there you change the color. Okay, so don't don't, uh, don't run out of uh, out of intensity too too early. Maybe do from a uh, from there. Forte for the beginning. Yes, we need to uh, start, with a, start with a full sound, but then we can maybe let go. We, we need more colors uh, because he, he doesn't really write for us all the colors uh, in there. It's just forte. But I, I think. Um, I think you need to put a lot more charm into it, uh, and um, and and the way to do it, first of all is to play the the, the markings. Of There's a lot of uh, off the string and all these. Uh, um you know, so uh, we need that. It's it's not legato, uh, unfortunately. I'm I'm sorry to to tell you, but uh, I don't know if you have a different edition from what what I was sent, but uh, but. But it uh, it needs uh, it needs to have all these uh, upper staccatos, but it's a slow upper. Uh, but the, it, the bow needs needs to go off because it gives this uh, forward uh, momentum, uh, like a staccato has this uh, the this um, um, habit of pushing through, going forward, and this is what we need. So you're starting a little slower and then uh, and then going faster, and that, that's the capricious capriciousness of it. So, uh, so, uh, mm -hmm. 
You know, you just need to be a lot more. We need to hear and in, not in a faster tempo because the tempo, uh, let's say, is here one, two, three. That is our tempo one, okay? But we don't need to be like a rigid, but from Taralam, from maybe you can go, but the T, ya, Daralam, the F sharp, don't rush it, T, da, Daralam, T, da, Daralam, okay? I think for that the tempo should not be too. Uh, it's allegro, you know. It's not the. Uh, it's not a presto or something. Don't rush it. Hold it very poised. The steam, you know. So you have time to. You know. Because we we uh, the pianist plays first and then comes up. So we can't. Uh, not play it's got to be the same okay let's try one more time this this thing okay i i, I think it needs slow let's do it slow under tempo because it's not it's not uh, rhythmically accurate enough it's a little bit uh, you know This, uh, I think you will enjoy playing it all on the G string, you know. I think you're a good enough player from, from here. I, I know it's not officially printed. It's printed on my part, but that's just Mr. Franciscati where we put it in the body. It's really worth it because uh, after all this, you know, it, it sounds a little bit. It, it, you've lost the, the depth of it all. But uh, anyway, you, that you will sort of at home. But let, let, let's just do this once, just for the form, da 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 to pronounce that. Just play one more time the opening. Now this poco più lento, yeah. This this for me was too fast. And keep it more more bleak, more uh, um, not too expressive. So that maybe my funny end. Maybe there it can be a little bit more expressive, but I. Uh, then you can warm it up a little bit but for me it was and both times also <coughs> later in the recap it, it was too fast Thank you so much, Peter. What a fantastic class you just gave everybody. We're really grateful. Um, I've brought in Carl Clausen from Hampshire Music Services and Ishani Bula from the Waverley Ensemble as well. Would you, would you... Our students will think they will go to music college and then get a job. Um, there is much more to it, right? You've just said you had lessons quite recently when you applied for this job. And we often think, actually, our lessons will end at the end of college and that's it. Uh, we forget that actually it's a lifelong learning. Uh, experience so I mean 
I just wondered how you got to your position where you are now. Absolutely. The thing is, you know, you need to have um, you need to have quite a lot from the two different worlds of the solo playing, you know, the conservatory stuff, your concertos and all, all your pieces, and understanding the orchestral repertoire and learning the orchestral repertoire, knowing how to play in a group. Um, at the audition, you need that because how often do we not sit on auditions where you have either somebody coming in a little bit struggling through the concertos, playing really very good excerpts, really meticulous, well prepared, or vice versa. They come in, they blow you away with the concertos and they play the excerpts. And, and sometimes I even almost get upset with some and think, why did you not go study that just with somebody who's in the business? It's so clear that you, you didn't bother to play those excerpts to somebody who's actually in the business of the of orchestra, uh, not taken care of. And uh, so you really need uh, both sides. And for me, um, yeah, as I said, I took it extremely seriously when I prepared for, for my audition. Uh, I spent a lot of money. I invested a lot of money to fly to Dallas to, because I chose him. I, I wanted to prepare for one week with him. And... Um, yeah, so, but it's worth the effort. You have to go the extra mile. It, it's an investment, but it's things that, that stay with you. Um, you know, and when I was in college, I always took orchestra uh, very seriously, very, very seriously. Um, I was lucky to, to be the leader, the concert master in most of the university, in most of the universities where I was. I was at four different universities in America through over eight years. And uh, so I was always interested in that and uh, of course uh, from a young age you know me and and uh, um, many of the of the people around me were all dreaming about you know becoming soloists uh, and that's okay that's fine because you, you have to aim really high you know and at the same time if you want to be a concert master of, of a world-class boxer you need to have certain of those qualities of uh, soloists because as we say in these Strauss things you 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 play along uh, you're exhausted by the time you come to a solo and all of a sudden you have to shine maybe you have only a few notes to play and you need to sound like a soloist you need to have that quality sound that makes a difference um and that's very hard um it's even something to get used to when uh because it's one thing to walk on stage you have a recital to play and you play your recital you're in that world you you're ready for that playing in orchestra and you know uh and then all of a sudden you have a solo to play uh, all on your own is is a very different experience nothing prepares you for that in college unless you actually do that and you learn through the experience peter thank you so much for joining us today um a huge thank you to shani we have shani we haven't really spoken to you um but shani um facilitates all this happening we're incredibly grateful uh, to be able to bring peter to these uh, to these guys um any any final words for us from you ashani Peter, thank you so much. It's just been inspirational. You are a fabulous teacher, musician, leader, chain musician, everything. Thank you. And thank you, Carl, for uh, linking us up with these fantastic uh, young budding violinists. Um, we hope that uh, everybody who's uh, played and watched today has had a really good time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Peter, you must be exhausted now after all that time. Yes, yeah. let, let him go and have a cup of tea. Thank you so much, everybody, and goodbye.